Hi everyone, my name is Umesh Patel. I am a principal sales engineer here at Snowflake. In the today's video, I am going to show you how you can integrate your Snowflake account with the open AI such as ChatGPT or Azure AI. So as you can see that Snowflake allow you to store near unlimited data, structured data, unstructured data into the Snowflake data platform. However, to derive the insight from this data, sometimes is challenging. And, and you need to understand the data model, you need to know the query, or you need to know the Python. So how about if you ask Snowflake questions in a natural language and give you the answer? So Snowflake made it easier for you to integrate the third-party hosted model, such as Azure OpenAI services or ChatGPT using the new feature called external network access from the UDF. This feature is a private preview as of now, August 2023, and uh, it can be used with the UDF as well as stored procedure. This feature reduces the complexity that you need to set it up using the external function, make it much more easier to integrate with the Snowflake, uh, Snowflake data cloud. So let's see how we can do the LLM within the Snowflake. There are three or four different ways you can do the LLM in the Snowflake. As you can see on the left, you can create the external function and the Snowflake or the Snowflake external access to create the function to call the external LLM to get the query or generate the query from those model and run into the Snowflake. That is the one way. You have to create the UDF function to call that. This video, I will show you how to do that part. The second way you can do that is that you can bring your own model, LLM model into the Snowflake using the new feature called the Snowpark Container Services. There are many videos available there. You can watch it out how you can do that. Uh, again, that feature is a private preview. The third way you can do is that you can leverage the Snowflake native application with the partner like NVIDIA and SAS already created those models for you and you can leverage in the your Snowflake account. And the fourth way is that Snowflake will also provide you the LLM model for you to use it within the Snowflake account. The idea is to bring the LLM model near your data rather than take the data out and going to the LLM model. So let's look at it how this thing works. Uh, in the Snowflake. So I'm going to log into my Snowflake account and you can see here there is a worksheet where I can have a various codes over here. So I'm going to go into the specific worksheet where uh, I'm going to show you how you can do it. All right, first of all, set up the context. You know, you need to have the role, uh, account admin role. I would advise that to set up initial integration as well as the networking role. And then you need to have your own database and warehouses. So I'm going to set the context. And then as a base practices, you need to create a role. Every time I do some job or something that is new feature, I create a separate role set so that only specific person can do that work. So I'm going to create a new role called a network admin. And I'm going to grant access in a such a way that that role can create the integration. It can create a secret and it can create a network rule. So that is what I'm going to do over here. And then I'm going to assign the usage privileges of my database schema and warehouses to that role. So that is kind of a best practices, create a role and give appropriate uh, uh, privileges required to breed an object. Then I'm going to attach that role to my sysadmin role to make sure the hierarchy there, the role hierarchy there, again, it is a part of best practices. And then I'm going to use that role to create a networking rule. So networking rule is a new feature where you can define that which website you allow your user to connect from the Snowflake account. So in this case, I'm going to create a networking rule called chat GPT networking rule, which allow you to connect to these two websites, api.openai.com as well as the Azure uh, OpenAI services. So I'm going to create the networking rule that is kind of a firewall that we determine, you know, what website that need to be accessed. 
Now I'm going to switch back to my sysadmin role to create the secret. The secret is required in order to give you the API key for your uh, chat GPT or Azure API. So in this case, you need to go to your chat GPT, go to the open AI, get your API keys and, and use that API key as a part of the password in this particular command. So I'm going to create this object. I already have that object, so I'm not going to uh, create uh, something new out of it, but you need open API key to put it here to replace with your key. The next you have to do is that you have to create an external access integration. So basically this integration allow you to access the outside website from within the Snowflake account. That's why we call integration. And this integration abide by the rules that you already created that which website it allowed to go in there. So it is extremely secure. All the communication happen from the Snowflake to those website is in a, a SSL mode. Uh, and you can see that there is a secret I'm going to use for that uh, integration. That is my open API key. So I'm going to create this integration. And now uh, everything is done that I need to set up as a part of the infrastructure. And now I'm going to create a Python UDF. The Python UDF, I'm going to use the OpenAI package. OpenAI package is available as a part of the Snowflake channel uh, in Anaconda. So you don't have to import that package and, uh, and put it into the Snowflake. So this is what you need to use OpenAI. Uh, I'm going to use version 3.a. And I'm going to say that I'm going to use my uh, integration I just created uh, so that it know that you know, this UDF is allowed to communicate to the, that networking rule that I have created. And also it will tell you that this particular UDF use that particular API key that I wanted to use it. You may want to use API key into the multiple UDF. That is how you can inherit those keys into the UDF. All right. Then you have the standard uh, a Python code that you write in any, any platform. So this way you can use the same code that you are writing in the other platform and you can use in the Snowflake. So this is the standard code. First, I'm going to get my OPN AEI key and use that key as a part of the parameter passing with my open API key, open API key parameter. And then I'm calling all open API process to answer the question. That's all I need to do to create the UDF. So I'm going to create a UDF and that will allow me to use that UDF from any query so you can use whether this SQL worksheet or you can use external tools and your reporting tool and whatnot. So wherever you wanted to use this uh, UDF, you can use it from. So once this uh, UDF is created, all you have to do is that you call the UDF using any uh, function that you are calling the Snowflake. So in this case, I'm going to call using the select queries uh, and calling that particular UDF and passing some of the information such as you know, I have my SQL tables. I'm getting the information about my database and schema. And uh, also I'm telling that in that particular table, I have this column available for the query. This is the context of the prompt. And then I say that I want to show a query to see the total cost per year, per month, per channel, right? So I'm going to call this UDF to give me the query that shows me total cost per year per channel based on the data I have in the Snowflake. So it will go to that uh, uh, chart GPT, give this query and give me the answer with this question uh, saying that here is your query done for this. So I'm going to say that, okay, this is the response. I have to extract this query. Now this is uh, something that you have to do manually, but you can automate it by using some of the function I'll show you quickly but this is the query that you can get out of it. So once you get this query, you can copy and paste that query into the editor and then you can run that query. I'm going to do that over here real quickly to just show you that the query that is generated from chat GPT that you can run from your Snowflake account. Now, remember that message that I got uh, with, without the query? In the Snowflake, you can extract the SQL queries from that messages because the format of the message is standard. Uh, you can use the regular expression substring, which allow you to take uh, the certain part of the queries from that prompt or from the answer of that prompt and give you the query only. 
I'm going to run this particular uh, uh, process, which is calling this, and again, I'm using the same API to do the query, right? So it will it will get me the response and, and extract the query from there, and there you go. I got this query. I'm going to copy this query and, and, and run it over here. That will uh, show me the cost per channel per year, per month. Right, so this is the query I got it right away. All right, so this is very simple as it is easy to set up and you can do much, much more with it. You know, the Snowflake has a, a, has a schema called the account usage schema where you can query uh, various things from the account usage schema. So let's say that if you want to find out what is my top 10 query in the last 24 hours. So what I have to do is that I have to give this context again with the chat GPT because it is my different query and it's showing that, hey, you know, I have my account usage schema, I have query history table, and I know some of the column already available into that table that I'm going to pass as a column name so it can generate the query with the meaningful column name. And then I say that, hey, give me the query that shows the top, top 10 query based on the top elapsed time for the last day. I'm going to run this function and it will show me the query where it says, uh, you know, uh, you can run the query to get the top 10 queries from the Snowflake account. So uh, the query is running right now. I have the small warehouse size, so it is very extremely efficient. It is running on the small warehouse size. Uh, and you see my query is already generated. I copy that query. And basically I can run this query over here. And you can see that it will give me the top 10 queries in the last 24 hours. So very easy to use the chat GPT in the Snowflake. You can query, you can generate the uh, SQL query code, you can generate the Snowpark Python code as well to generate the chart if you want to do that. Uh, everything is can be integrated with the Snowflake and you can write application on top of it such as with the Streamlit, uh, which allow you to integrate this function that you just created with the Streamlit function. So, uh, and you can do much more with it. You can find the sentiment. You Let's say you have some data in the Snowflake and you want to do, uh, find the sentiment of those data. You can say that classify the sentiment and you can run with it. And you can do a lot of things like that. You can get the value of those sentiment, do more analysis from your data all within the Snowflake. Again, you don't have to send data across from Snowflake to those models. You just send the metadata and uh, that's where you can get the query and run the query in the Snowflake. Now, there are two things you have to take care of it. Sometimes those database schema and the column name and database table and everything, it is very sensitive. You do not want to send it to the public data model. So just keep in mind that what you send it to that public data model, okay? And the second thing is that you have to also uh, consider that, you know, the, the query that is generated it is not always correct query. Sometimes you get the wrong query. Sometimes uh, the query uh, it generate it takes a longer time to learn the query rather than if somebody write the query by their own. So you have to some diligence in terms of what you want you to run within this kind of a model, and and based on that you can implement for your use case. So uh, Snowflake provide you all the way you want to do that. This is the video that show you how you can do the third party model. However, you can bring that third-party model into the Snowflake and run as your personal model so that it is only for you, available for you. You can train that model and run all within the Snowflake because your data exists in the Snowflake, right? So that way it will be much more secure than any other implementation out there. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this is useful to you. All the code described here, it is, I'll put the link in the bottom of the video that might be helpful to you. Thank you so much.